the line boards. Figured I'd show y'all how I set F1 of them. Really not a hard process, takes just a little bit. Get it clamped to the plates here. And then I can clamp the plates to the mill table and show you all how to set up the rest of it. This thing looks a little bit complicated. And the first time I set it up, it took me a little bit. But now that I've learned how it works, it's uh, relatively easy to set up. It uses the same type of centering rings to use on the decking fixture. Except it has a brass insert for the bar to line up in. And all this is for is to get you close by lining the bar up. It has a support that you use for the center of the block. Lineup plates. Got it bolted up, takes four in the front, lines up off the timing cover dowels. Still got the centering rings in it, my support, centering in the back. The back lines up off the bell housing dowels and got four bolts holding the back on. We have two little supports, the bolts and the pan rail. that hold the brace for the center support. It's kind of a pretty wiggly type deal, but it needs to, so it floats well when you set it up. Sets right down on that. Bolt it to these little supports. And that's how that support sets up. It's real adjustable. It floats uh, up and down, back and forth, all types of directions, so it's nice and free. Uh, I'll get the bushings pulled out of the ends and get the dial indicator out and indicate the front and rear main in. I've actually built these thick here to hold the block. They had some stuff that really didn't like the way it looked, so when I bought the fixture, I didn't get them. I just built these, it works real well. It actually has air that you hook up. These little aluminum pieces here, they'll expand a certain amount and clamp the spherical bearing that is here that floats. And these adjust the bearing up and down and you lock them in place once it's indicated in. Same thing on the rear. I'll get these pulled out, like I said, and show you all how to indicate it in. Got the centering rings out. Bar's nice and free now. Got about 30 pounds of air pressure on the little bearings here. You get a little clamp, clamps around the bar, you mount your indicator to. It's a well thought out setup. All right, the indicator clamps on the bar. Also, they have these little rings which slide over the end of the bar on each end and you can snug them up to keep the bar from moving back and forth when you're indicating it in it won't slide back and forth this way
takes a little time to get it indicated in. I usually do a four point back and forth across the block this direction and then up and down. Because once the caps get some light on here, once the caps are cut, you're not dealing with a round hole. So you really can't go off of that. Okay, got one end done. The centering rings on the end, get it pretty close. You can get it close enough that you almost don't have to cut all the caps. But I do. And I've done a few where I've had to just do one. y'all had watched the video of where I fixed Jackie's small block. I actually only cut that one cap a bunch and got it back round and just skimmed the other caps and then hit it with the line home just enough to smooth everything up and so far it seems to have worked out pretty well for them. Okay. That is how it's indicated in. The bar is still nice and free. So you can snug up that. And we're ready to start doing some cutting. Got the little indicator here, magnetic clamps to the bar by magnetic and that's how you set up the cutter. That'd be a cheat sheet I made, all the sizes for the different style blocks. Uh, it works out pretty well, I don't have to guess at some of the sizes and stuff. there stick the tool in there then you have this little adjusting that goes in the bottom and you know it'll go against the tool tighten up little set screws and this fine adjustment will run the cutter up and down make sure it's all the way down snug it up we have our little digital indicator get it set on there zero it out and that's a number that I've calculated up 
to what height from here to here is so it cuts the right size hole. Right in that range should leave me somewhere around a thousandth to actually hone out of the block with a line hone once I get get bored. Got it actually running. Y'all can see. Oh, actually, cutting some little chips off of it. it might be hard to see. a few chips falling down now and then I go back and line home it. Here's another little tool they provide when you buy the setup. It's a little spring loaded plunger in it. It's got a lock that you can get it maybe where you can see. There we go. And you can lock the plunger. Whoop! You don't want to let it go when there's pressure on it. And this actually goes in the same spot the tool goes in, like so. Okay. Tool drops in the same hole as the tool does. Oops. Right, right again. Slide it inside. Release the plunger and tighten the little handle up and you slide it out. You can actually mic it and see what size our hole is. Pretty nice little tool and check each one before you pull it off. And next step is to hit it with the line hone and finish up this one. <laughs> 